This is a diagram of the basic anatomy of a beverage antenna. The diagram shows the actual beverage wire, uh, uh, which can range uh, anywhere from 700 to 1,000 feet or so, or anywhere in between. Uh, the beverage wire length is indeed, though, what determines the uh, RDF, or the received directivity factor, or the, uh, um, you know, the front to back, although RDF is a more accurate parameter for that. Um, on the one end, on this end, which is called the uh, termination end, is the, also the end of maximum direction or reception. In other words, the antenna is receiving toward the termination end. At this end, is, uh, the, the wire is terminated uh, to ground through a resistor, and that resistor value is uh, essentially a function. The optimum uh, resistance is, is a function of the, what's called surge impedance of the antenna. Um, there's a lot of information online to, uh, discussing how to calculate and derive the surge impedance, but uh, it's, a, it's basically a function of the uh, gauge of the wire antenna itself and its height above ground. In my case, most of my wires are 6 to 10 feet above the ground. Uh, but my experience has shown that really I just have stayed with a 470 ohm termination resistor, and that's uh, proven to be uh, provide a very good uh, match to all of my wires. And, uh, and, and uh, other literature has indicated that uh, the ter absolute termination value doesn't really impact uh, greatly the uh, directivity of the, uh, of the beverage. Um, I've also shown in the diagram a gas discharge tube uh, across the resistor. Uh, this is there just to, uh, it's not necessary, but I've included it to um, dissipate any uh, lightning uh, hits that might occur either direct or uh, nearby onto the wire uh, to uh, prevent literally destroying the resistor. Uh, you know, if I do take a hit, the uh, discharge tube will... Um, uh, dissipate that uh, power to uh, to ground. The termination is uh, usually what I use as a uh, copper uh, tuber, uh, copper, copper tube pipe. Uh, you know, basically bought from home building centers. Uh, I use three quarter inch copper uh, pipe. Uh, you buy it in twelve foot lengths. I'll usually cut it in three and use four foot lengths and just drive them in the ground. And I find actually a four foot ground rod is proven to be adequate uh, for my uh, for, for my my ground type. Uh, at the uh, receive end, um, uh, this is where we uh, have a matching uh, transformer. Uh, usually, as I said, most, uh, antenna, most beverages will be range anywhere from 500 to 600 ohm uh, impedance. Again, that's a function of the height above ground and the actual ground itself. But uh, again, this is uh, proven to be pretty uh, universal for, for all of the antennas I've built, all the beverages I have. So therefore, we need to match that 500 or 560 ohm um, impedance of the antenna itself to the 75 ohm coax, and we do that with a matching transformer. And um, we build the transformers. Uh, I use binocular type 73 uh, material. Uh, it's a core that uh, is readily available. It's uh, made by Ferrite. I've got the part number here. I'll include it at the end of the uh, video. Uh, I purchased mine from DigiKey or Newark. They're quite affordable. They're like 70 cents. They're just little cores. Here's, here's what they look like, little binocular cores, readily available. Um, and so to wind them, uh, I'm going to just show briefly how we wind these cores. I, I, I find what's handy is this wire wrap wire. I mean, this is, um, you can use any kind of wire. I've used enameled wire. Heck, I've even used uh, Cat5 wire. But to be honest, I've found that to be a little thick and it's not as reliable. This is a really tough coating and you can get it in different colors. So I use, uh, I find that to be pretty handy stuff. Um, so to, to, to wind the transformer, look, you can, you can buy all these components uh, online, ready-made boxes, but it's, 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 they're pretty easy to build. Uh, so to you know, so wind the primary here, so we, we just take our wire and we, we run it through the core like this. So that, that's one turn, okay? That's, that's called one turn. And then I'll, I'll, I'll just run it through uh, again like this. And then this now is two turns. So there we have it. That's our, our primary of two turns. And then for the uh, secondary, I use some blue wire. So we run the blue wire in to come out the other side. And so we run this through. And so now that's one turn. And we go through again. And now this is two turns. And we go back. And that's... 
three turns. Pretty easy to do. That's four turns. I get the wires tangled in here, but it's, and then we'll go five turns this is my last round. And there's five turns. So there you got it. Is that pretty simple? So now we have two turns to five turns and that will transform uh, 75 ohms into uh, about 560 ohms or 550 ohms there about. So really cool thing you could do here if you're, <laughs> well, one, one thing by the way, that when you wind them like this, you can, if you're, you think you might've lost count, you can actually count the turns on this side. There should be five loops on this side and that confirms indeed that there's five turns. So that, that's kind of how it works when you wind them this way. But another thing you could do, uh, uh, is okay you can take a uh, your analyzer set your analyzer which is calibrated at the end of its leads and set the uh, 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 reference impedance to 75 ohms okay and then what you do is you put a, a resistor across this end about a say a 600 ohm resistor and then do a, a SWR sweep with the analyzer set for 75 ohm impedance and you should get one to one Another trick is you could set your analyzer uh, on this end and put a variable resistor here until you see exactly one to one and then measure that resistance and that'll confirm what this, uh, what this match is. You know, the truth of it is, I mean, I don't bother doing that anymore because I, I know that that, uh, that works, but sometimes for comfort, it's, it's fun to do. Um, so another thing I'll do is I'll literally, I'll take uh, some old school whiteout uh, that we use for correction and uh, I'll just paint that on the core and I just label it with a marker two turns five turns so that I know the uh, I know the, the, the value of the core and which which turns are which um, the uh, gas discharge tubes that uh, that I use are these little guys here again I purchased them from DigiKey although all suppliers will have them I'll uh, include the, uh, the part number uh, though there's many to select from. I chose one that's got about 141 uh, volt breakdown voltage, but uh, I think that was one of the lowest I could find. Um, they're about a dollar each. And the termination resistor, this is an Ohmite, OY471KE. Again, I purchased that at DigiKey. Uh, it's 470 ohm, two watt resistor. They're a little pricey, they're about $3. But uh, So those are the, uh, those are the components uh, to the, to the uh, to the both the match and the termination. So now let's just have a look at the various enclosures and uh, ways that uh, you can install and deploy these uh, these two uh, boxes uh, in the field. The simplest uh, enclosure method um, is what I would call the dead bug method. Uh, basically uh, using solder tabs and stainless steel screws to uh, Mount, mount the, uh, the components, in this case a matching transformer, uh, using F connectors, of course my system is all RG6 and F connectors are really uh, easy to use. Uh, the boxes I use, you'll see in all cases, I, I find these to be just great, uh, a great size and they're quite affordable. These are uh, Hammond 1591 LSBK uh, boxes. They're about three, uh, three inches by two inches uh, square. They're about four dollars or so from DigiKey. Uh, another thing, you know, um, many, uh, ma both commercial manufacturers and others will tend to mount, uh, you know, the, the hardware inside the box, you know, with the screws on the side. But that's, I find that to be painfully inconvenient. It's much easier to just use the lid. Uh, and, and, and mount the components on the lid, then you can easily solder them together. You close the lid and you're ready to go and deploy it in the field. Another important thing, make sure you drill some drain holes in case you get condensation water buildup uh, inside. Again, number eight, stainless steel screws and just drill the holes and mount them, mount them through. Here's an example of uh, termination. You know, it's basically the same idea. Pretty, pretty simple. A couple of stainless steel screws and there's my gas discharge tube across the 470 ohm resistor and, and that's ready to go. Another, another thing you can do is, you know, etch your own boards. I, I do that uh, occasionally. This was for a, for a two wire beverage termination transformer, but you know, etching a board is pretty simple. Copper clad board using an indelible marker, uh, you know, like a Sharpie, mark it out and etch it in a pan of ferric chloride. You same stainless steel screws and, you know, mount it on the lid and, and then away you go uh, for, for deployment in the field. You know, etching, making boards, I find this is another 
kind of project I had. And I have relays, and etching is hand, better for, hand, for using relays because, you know, the, the, the wiring can get rather complex, and frankly, it can be, you know, a little bit ugly uh, to uh, dead bug mount relays and kind of, kind of messy. So, you know, that, that's one of the reasons for perhaps etching a board. But, you know, another approach is to, you know, go with a, a commercial board, okay? Now, this is a, a termination, um, rather a, a feed box board that I've built on a, uh, a board which I had manufactured, designed myself and had manufactured by a company called OHS Park uh, out of the U.S. Uh, they're double-sided boards, um, uh, solder mask and silk screen, uh, really, really uh, handy uh, to and easy to build. I mean, this this board only cost about $4, um, you know, and again, it's the same idea. We use the same ham and box and mount it, uh, mount it on the lid and, you know, put it, uh, put it together. We deploy it, uh, deploy it in the field. Um, uh, this is a, an example of uh, the same, same thing using uh, a commercially made uh, board that I had designed for uh, for my termination. Same idea, stainless uh, number eight stainless steel screws mounted on the lid, and away we go. A again, these these boards are great. You know, here's uh, here's what they look like. They're they're really um, really nice quality uh, boards, as I say, and pretty easy to uh, to build. Um, this is uh, I think they're they're. Probably not. Probably they're almost certainly overkill to do this for just uh, matching uh, board or matching box and termination. But this is a, a board that I had uh, that I designed and had made for me for my uh, two uh, wire phased beverage uh, switch box. Um, I'm broadside phasing uh, two beverages and. Um, we to do that we require a, a magic T or a zero degree hybrid combiner, um, and I decided to um, design that board, uh, this board, in order to be able to select each individual wire separately rather than uh, just always have them have them face together for various reasons. And so therefore I needed some relays. And when you, whenever I have relays, I find that you know etching a board is really really handy. In this case, you know I have a you know, I basically use a, a metal uh, Hammond box, or rather an aluminum box, and basically just mount it in and uh, it's ready to go, go in the field. Um, perhaps, as I said though, making your own boards and etching a board is probably more important when things get complicated. This is a uh, switch board for switching and selecting the various relays that I have in the field, in, in which case on each header I have uh, you know, four different uh, beverage wires. This particular design that I built is, I think, also probably a bit overkill. I, I designed a circuit which provides isolation using two uh, relays um, uh, to, to enhance the uh, um, isolation when I'm selecting individual beverages. But basically, I have each individual beverage uh, selected here uh, with a control voltage with my cat. Uh, cat 5 control line out to the field and this goes to the uh, goes to the rig uh, let me just um, do a quick rundown on just basically the overview of how you use and how you can build those PC boards online because it's a you know they're they're a lot of fun and uh, um, it's quite easy to design using a program called KiCad uh, for both uh, schematic and PC PCB design this is a photograph of the four beverage relay switch box that I built uh, originally to select uh, any one of the four beverages in the field uh, to go to the main trunk line. I have two of these headers in the, uh, in the forest. Um, my original design was uh, built as shown here using a self-etched uh, board. Um, here's the schematic. I mean, basically it was a single relay selection at any one, uh, any relay being activated would uh, select that feed line going to the individual beverage. And, uh, you know, this shows the uh, etched board that I uh, built. Um, and, you know, I wasn't real happy with this. And I, I, I had discovered this uh, online resource called OHS Park that provides the ability to design your own uh, circuit boards. So I thought oh, I'd give that a try and uh, I think I showed some examples of that earlier and so this is the schematic I built and it, it's basically um, two individual relays at any one time to enhance isolation uh, of, of that beverage between the others. 
uh, personally, I think this is overkill, but anyway, I, I proceeded along to build it. Uh, you know, the relays are only like, I think, $3 each. So it was really just designing the board and uh, soldering it together. Uh, I just wanted to show roughly or the, the basics of how you do that. Um, there's a program called uh, KeyCAD. Uh, and, and uh, you know, the, the whole purpose here of me showing this is, frankly, to me, this is part of the fun of ham radio is building stuff. And I find this to be just a, just, a, just a riot and a lot of fun to build your own PC board and have it etched and come back home looking kind of professional. Uh, you start with a, pr a program called KiCad or KiCad. Um, great uh, resource and you download this program uh, and it's all free. And uh, then you end up with this program called um, uh, you build a project and then you, you create your own schematic. And this is an example of the schematic I built for that relay board. And what you might do, for example, is you, you know, you, you have the ability to place a symbol and, you know, and then what will come up is, a, you know, a symbol library. And it's amazing what selections there are already built in here. You can just pick a part. And uh, in this case, you know, I'll say I'll pick this relay, um, you know, and then you can just basically pl plot a relay and then you can place uh, wires and, and basically you just just wire the thing together. It's really simple. I'm obviously not going to go into the details of how to use this, but honestly, I downloaded this program and, and within the first uh, couple hours, I had built this schematic. Then what you do after you've built the schematic as you want it, and you, again, you can place resistors or any component you want. Now, what you do is a few things. You, you assign footprints to, the, uh, to each component, uh, and then you do an export to what's called a net file. And then what that does is it then allows you to export uh, export it and, and to a uh, PC board. Uh, this isn't the one, so I'll just show you the one. I've built a couple of projects here, so if we want to look at the uh, four relay board, so it looks like this. And so what will happen is when it's imported here, this is where you design the PC board and actually place your traces. Um, you um, and initially, when it's imported from the schematic, these will be all jumbled up. But you can drag the components uh, around, you know, as as you as you want. And uh, as I'm showing there, and then you basically will place your traces, and you can place traces on the top side of the board or the bottom side of the board, green or red. You can, uh, and then you design your uh, footprints. These are for my F connectors, uh, and and uh, these are for my number eight stainless steel screw pads. You basically design it out. Uh, really another cool function here before you uh, order it, you can actually view the darn thing in 3D. So here's a 3D view uh, of, the, uh, of the board. You can actually rotate it to see what it looks like. So, you know, you really uh, know what, you're, uh, what, what it's going to look like. Um, what else did I have here? I can show you the, so then this is, this is the board I built for the matching uh, board. Uh, you know, I, and I, I made the footprint and my silk screen. I could put my call on it. And uh, again, you can view this in uh, 3D, which is kind of cool. Uh, again, it's uh, and so before you order the board, you know, you can really, uh, really be clear on what it looks like. And you can even print, um, print this out when you print it. It's actually to scale. So then you can really look at it and make sure that all of your holes are the correct size and, and things such as that. Uh, once you've done that, you save it and you get a you get a file. I think it's, I, I can't remember. I think it's called a PCB file. And then what you do is this is just show, just to show the simplicity of the whole thing is you go to this company called OH Park. Uh, it, these guys are out of, I don't know, I think Oregon or Washington, maybe they're California, I don't know. But uh, you notice here, you, you basically can literally upload your KiCad file. You browse for your files, you upload it, it provides everything they need. All of the traces, uh, the, the silk screen, the uh, solder mask, and all of the uh, drill parameters that are required to make that board. So you literally just upload your board, uh, you basically uh, one click and it, it uploads it and then you get to look at it. You know, I can say, well, here's the top board and you can look at it and make sure it's exactly what you want. And, and then you just order the thing, send them your visa and they, they show up in the mail, free, free delivery. Again, it, you can order only a minimum uh, uh, of three boards. So you, you can't order less. I'm sorry, a maximum. You can't order less than three boards. So this is, for example, these are my uh, matching beverage boards. Uh, you know, they're 20 bucks for uh, three of them. And this is my termination board. And there's my uh, uh, feed box uh, board. This is my phase box uh, board for my beverages. And then this is the... Um, 
uh, the switch box that I just uh, just was showing you. Anyway, a lot of fun. I, I encourage you to give this a try just to play with it. Obviously, this type of thing is designed for making far more complex uh, boards, like uh, you know, you know, uh, literally CPU type things, but and surface mount stuff. But hey, it works just as well. It's pretty affordable, and you end up with a pretty nice product at the end. Anyway, there you go. That's some a, a rundown of all the different, uh, or at least not all, some of the different ideas that I've uh, used to. Uh, to, to build enclosures and mount things uh, out in the field for my uh, beverage receive system.